Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, we talk manga from time to time on this channel, not too much. Uh, from what I can gather from people who are sending in questions, you'd like to hear more about manga and some of those comics. I probably need to do a better job on that. Kind of right at the same time, I need to do a better job promoting indie comics as well. So there's, uh, there's quite a few uh, need to do a better job things on this channel, as always. Uh, but uh, manga as a, as a topic... Um, I, I think what I've tried to convey, and, and I don't know that it's it's fully come across, is that there there's a massive amount of genres and uh, and different story types in manga, and this is uh, something that I think for a while, in in complete and fair in field fairness, uh, manga didn't necessarily handle well. And what I mean by that is uh, is it 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 had those genres, but it marketed it in a uh, pretty clunky way at times. It was sometimes hard uh, to, you know... Well, the classic example is if you remember uh, places like Tower Records and other uh, music stores, they used to sell manga pretty heavily in the early to mid-90s. Uh, that was kind of one of the first booms that happened in the space. And uh, But they weren't terribly good at understanding kind of what would sell in the U.S. And, and what kind of content would go. And you would see just confusion. You'd see sci-fi stuff. You'd see very adult stuff. Uh, Overfiend, I remember, if some of you may remember that one, sitting right next to like Tenshi Moyo and uh, Lum. I know it's not called Lum, but I, I call it Lum. I like Lum. I, they're, re, they're kind of redoing Lum, which is... Uh, I have to imagine is going to not go well. I, I, I know it's it's cliche to say, you know, the original is always better in every case, because it's not. There's examples of remakes and things that, you know, you could do it just fine. But uh, Lum is such a, uh, God, it's a, there's just a charm about that series. So I, I worry about what a uh, 2022 version looks like or what a re redone version looks like. I, it just worries me. Anyway, um, Sorry, uh, ba backing up a little bit. Anyway, so you see all these like very like romance, uh, what what kind of early on was called slice of life, action, horror, uh, very adult stuff, all kind of bundled together, and there wasn't a really good understanding of of kind of what to do with it. And then I think a combination of a few things hit where you had um, better online presence, so people could actually categorize and and split things up uh, themselves differently. You had uh, Webtoon and sites like that do a, a really good job of leading with genre first, which was smart. And, uh, and it just in general, they found their audience. You know, they, My Hero Academia uh, was, you know, scratched the itch for people who wanted superhero content and felt like they hadn't gotten it, you know, in that kind of tight in a long time. Uh, same thing with things like One Piece being, you know, an adventure series or... Uh, Demon Hunter being kind of lightweight horror, some you know Japanese elements uh, in terms of culture. It's there's a lot of um, Demon Hunter, Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer. Sorry, it's it's early, uh, but regardless, um, manga seems to have figured it out certainly a lot more now, and I think that's going to help them. They they now get to play each genre somewhat separately, and why that's so powerful is that if interest starts to fade in one, they can pivot to the other throw some marketing behind it, and it, it's going to operate more like Hollywood operates their movies as opposed to, you know, everything trying to rise together, which is kind of the approach in the 90s and also the early 2000s. Manga's bubble burst pretty pretty much twice in the U.S. before finally catching this time, and I think that's a huge reason why. They're, they're able to play multiple bets simultaneously. Um, you can have a, uh, you know, One Punch Man and a Promise Neverland both being successful at the same time. It's just, uh, that's kind of how it can go. Anyway, so, uh, but but there's one series, uh, and I've had the same question myself. So a reader drops in uh, to ask a question about one particular uh, manga series or anime series, uh, and why it seems to be uh, often categorized as like the nickelback of manga by some. Uh, there's going to be people who really love this uh, this title I'm about to mention, and they're going to be offended at the idea that, that people make fun of it. But if you if you if you search your heart, um, you'll you'll recognize what uh, the the writer is saying. So it says, "Hey Perch, it seems like it's uncool among comic book and manga readers to say I'm reading Dragon Ball. Is it just me? If so, what the hell? I really enjoy the books, and I can't seem to find anyone to geek out with about it." Uh, Follow-up question, Viz seems to have each story arc as a separately licensed property. Is this a typical thing in literature? 
Uh, so second part of your question first. Uh, no, it's not typical. It does happen. Uh, typically, this happens when uh, the, you know, the anime or the, the cartoon rights are being funded by a particular studio. And sometimes the studio shifts, so it necessitates that uh, these arcs uh, get handled separately. It's, it is rare, but it does happen. I think it happens in Europe occasionally. It happens in, uh, I think, Japan a little bit more often. It happens in the U.S., I think, never Although there are never, I mean, it's happened occasionally. Uh, most of what I think Thundercats, uh, that may be wrong. It was Silverhawks. One of the uh, 80s cartoons had that situation going where um, one of the networks was partially funding the series. And, and then it switched. Um, and it, it, it just it changed it up. So then the licensing happened to ha had to happen separately. But uh, anyway, uh, kind of uncommon. Yeah, one of those interesting kind of... Uh, Trivia questions that uh, that people might you know find fun if they cared about Dragon Ball, uh, which they clearly don't because it's for nerds. Uh, no, I, I'm joking. I'm completely joking. Um, Dragon Ball is a weird one. I agree. By the way, it's not just you. Um, Dragon Ball has very strong fans who really enjoy it, know the characters, yeah, you know, uh, love it. And uh, I've seen people geeking out. I mean, there's Facebook groups and there's uh, you know there's there's plenty of locations and there's tons of uh, YouTube communities built around Dragon Ball. So it's there's definitely people who absolutely love it. However, um, in manga circles, Dragon Ball seems to be portrayed as the crappy one, as the, you know, uh, the, the, the cheaper one, the one that uh, people believe is uh, just, 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 you know, low, low cost, low quality, um, poor dubbing, uh, just, you know, it's the it's kind of like 80s cartoons with a lot of reuse of, uh, of backgrounds. It's, it, it's portrayed as the cheaper, crappier uh, manga. And there is some truth to that, not, not on the crappy part. I, I think I like Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is a fun adventure series. There's some good stuff about it. There's definitely some anime cliches and tropes, like there are in 100% of all anime. Um, I mean, I found people uh, really insult Dragon Ball and then turn around and praise Demon Slayer uh, for the same kind of, you know, aspect. Uh, you know, Demon Slayer of, uh, you know, is, I like Demon Slayer a lot, okay? But there is a, a definite uh, pattern and structure to the battles and to what people go out and do. There's a definite, um, there's a definite arc that plays out <laughs> whenever there's a big boss fight. Um, if you watched... Um, uh, the movie. Uh, why is my space on name? Uh, Maiju Train. Um, anyway, the, again, people call me fake fake manga fan for spacing on the name there. But uh, but you watch a lot. It it all starts to blur together, especially when you're old and crappy. Um, but there was there's definitely a a pattern, a definitive pattern. And I've watched people really go after Dragon Ball for having the same formula, the same pattern to battles and adventures and kind of boss boss fights and everything else. Uh, but you know, Demon Slayer does the same thing. Um, arguably a lot of these series do. Um, I've watched people go at Dragon Ball for um, excessive kind of flashbacks and backstory that seem to go nowhere, and I'm like, have you met One Piece? I love One Piece, but holy crap, when they get into uh, Flashback Town, it is, uh, yikes. I mean, you're, you, you get the same scene. I mentioned before the Cherry Blossom Tree uh, business uh, when they got Chopper. Oh my god. And then like, dr you know, they drag you through Robin's past. It's when they were doing the, um, uh, was it the, uh, uh, when they went down to, when they were about to cross the grand line and they went to the Fishman uh, underwater uh, island, underwater location. And they started uh, going back and, and replaying the flashbacks to the uh, Arlong Park <laughs> Nami situation. I like that was a fine arc and I appreciated Arlong Park and I, everything that went on there, but, Oh my God, please do not, like, you don't need to, you know, it, it is like they're trying to just pad out the hell out of the series. Anyway, uh, they, they all do it. Uh, Dragon Ball is, is, I think, rendered a little cheaper, uh, for sure. It's, it's older in a lot of cases. The animation style doesn't look as, uh, as modern and new and crisp as some of the newer stuff, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. Um, Dragon Ball has a reputation for being uh, kind of the the kid version or the, the one that's for younger audience. And uh, so, you know, if you're a true man of culture, if you're a true, uh, you know, older person, then, then you'd migrate to other series. I think it, in many ways, it's kind of how people, um, you know, think about Archie. I mean, Archie is a comic 
and I, Dragon Balls, I think, got a lot more going on to it than uh, than Archie. But I think that's how a lot of people look at it in manga circles. Uh, you know, Archie is very successful, keeps getting sold. Um, you know, has you know no issues. Um, but it is aimed at a very specific audience. I think uh, Dragon Ball is probably aimed at a slightly different audience than most of manga, and so people make fun of it. And it is uh, that's how I, I I've heard it portrayed as that the Nickelback of manga is Dragon Ball, and I, I that that's that's a low blow um, for sure. Um, I I should probably do a video on on Dragon Ball just in general. I think you know in a lot of cases if you are you know, pretty young. If you, if you, I'm trying to think if you like, uh, a lot of this, if you're in that scholastic superhero world and you're moving to, uh, kind of more, um, you know, you're starting to get into, you know, m maybe some of Marvel's, uh, junior adventures, uh, maybe you're, you're just trying to get into kind of these comics for the first time. Uh, Dragon Ball can be a good bridge. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. Um, it's a good introduction to manga. If it's been something that feels very, very foreign to you, and there's a lot there. I mean, again, that's a wonderful thing about manga is you can jump into a title and, you know, 300 episodes later or thousands of, of chapters later, uh, you are, you know, you, you committed, you, you've got a, a huge story to go into. Um, it reminds me, and this is a video, uh, which I will do kind of right after this one, but, uh, a lot of people within comics, uh, within the, the publishers, um, in particular, Marvel and DC, in this case, because they're the ones who have these ongoing stories, uh, I often hear them portray uh, the amount, kind of the mass, the volume of stories as a negative. And uh, it's bizarre to me, because it's, it's, it is your positive, it is your strength. So to say, you know, it's this idea of like, ah, the readers won't know where to begin because there's thousands of, of chapters. It's like, that's a very weird way to look at it. So we'll talk about that. But anyway, thank you very much for your question. Great question. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, I say you watch Dragon Ball, enjoy it. I will go for it. <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, I, a lot of it's just fun. And if you're having fun, who cares what people say? And it's, uh, I, you, you go, look a little harder. You'll find some good communities, people who love this stuff. Anyway, thanks for the question. Let me know what you think about Dragon Ball or any of this stuff in the comments below. And thanks for listening.